Most people in life are familiar with the romantic comedies or the romantic films of our generation. We have been watching film from the time that they were silent film with um, a marvelous actor whose name escapes me besides Charlie Chaplin, but there's some another fella uh, who was a budding man who was quite uh, Buster Keaton. Sorry, I apologize. I almost lost my brain there. But the reality is that we've had a marvelous film education throughout our whole lives. We see how technology flies today. We see advancements in technology that we haven't seen come down to the consumer level yet. We see marvelous things. And I remember when I used to sell camera equipment for Nikon in America, or what you call Nikon in America, that openly the salesman would always say that Nikon was always 10 years ahead of what we were receiving as consumers on the shelves for me to sell to people who came into that camera shop. My point in talking about this is we're looking at what is everything to you today. When I ask you what is everything to you, what I'm asking you is what means everything in the world to you today? Everybody has property, everybody has parenting, everybody has possessions, everybody has, I don't know, paper bags that might be important to you. I have a late friend who used to live next door to me. We'd go to late night dog walking and she had the dogs and we had the time. And we loved to go with her because it was a great talk time. She was marvelously a little bit more seasoned in life than me and my wife and we enjoyed those conversation talks. She sort of taught us about life from a different perspective where she lived separately from her husband and they had four marvelous houses across the land and that's all she had at this time. But the reality is what I'm talking about is that she shared with us all sorts of things from her Catholic perspective and she gave us a great education. We had marvelous wine and dining times with her both at our house and her house which was basically next door neighbors. In life, we have moments of time to talk about what is everything, and at the time, my Japanese spouse and son were everything to me. My son almost cost me everything, which is absolutely true, when he got wayward involved with the wrong kind of Hispanic families and the wrong kind of people that lead people astray today. You see, in order to stay on God's path today, we have to be willing to listen to the Lord. And listening to the Lord is not creating a horde. Listening to the Lord is thinking about people and how do I serve in my role in my function in my world. Deciding what is everything in your life takes a quick answer usually. I can tell you in a second, in a heartbeat, what is everything to me today. What was everything to me over 10 years ago would have been different than it is for me today. But what I know is that everything walked into my life after two very solid prayers in a situation when I was in strife. Everything walked into my life from the fact that I got on my knees in a way that I had never really done before in my life and prayed for something, please God, please. And within less than a week, everything walked into my life. Now everything was a little bit of mess, everything was a little bit of fuss, everything was a little bit of fun, everything was a little bit of chaos, everything was a little bit of drama, and everything was a little bit of a drama queen, but the reality is that she stole my heart, mind, and soul just as God planned for her to do. So everything in life might be different for you, but what is your everything? And are you working towards safeguarding your everything? Are you working towards honoring your everything? Are you saying to people, this is my everything? And there's nothing more important than my everything. You see, for men, it's usually earning because we tend to be not intentionally, but we tend to be the providers of families because what tends to happen is that women are the providers of child rearing and therefore they don't have as much time to work full time, not always truthful, not always factual, what I mean is that we do have some marvelous single parent homes, we also do have some marvelous dual income family homes and they figure out how to make it work. But the reality is I'm not trying to be a sexist jerk, I'm being honest but I've been to plenty of networking events where there's been men and women present and the way that men approach men is very different than the way that women approach men in their conversation. There is a girls network and there's a guys network and it's a very different conversation and a very different ride. But the absolute truth is that most people are working towards their everything. Maybe your everything is getting into retirement early. Maybe your everything is to pay off that house so that you have a place to live into your elderly years. But did you pick a house that's going to handle that for you? Or are you going to have to keep going up and down stairs at a point where you might lose your eyesight, where you might lose your stability, where you might lose your hips and your mobility? And are you prepared to make that move? 
I have a friend, a late relative, if you would, who didn't put a lot of stock into the property things in his home. He'd go in there, it was pretty paltry, and the furniture was nothing fancy, and it was kind, nice enough and kind enough, and nothing really that felt like a home to me most of the time. But they spent most of their time outside in water parks and traveling and doing things as a family. And that's what they put their everything into. There are other people who are like me who like to be at home, and I enjoyed my home a great deal. I always wanted people to take their shoes off and be comfortable, and even our students in our Japanese classroom did exactly what you do in a Japanese facility. Took your shoes off, put slippers on, and conducted your business. That is exactly what you do. You take your street shoes off and you put your guest slippers on. Not exactly in manufacturing houses, of course, but in the offices of those manufacturing environments, which I've had the marvelous opportunity travel overseas to see some incredible facilities at the cost of my company and my own free time afterwards where I stayed on longer and came in came back after everyone so that I could see some family while I was there but the truth in life is that we have to know what our everything is and my everything walked in and out of my life in a way that I've never been the same and I don't think that in life we have the right to not tell everything how much we miss them in our life.